Our schools teach us not to make mistakes. And what Fuller says, we learn by mistakes. You know, like a baby can't learn to walk unless they fall down. So the reason what many people fail in life is because they're a feel of failing. So I, it wasn't about me getting smarter, making them smarter. It was basically teaching them how to make mistakes and get the principle and how to learn from your mistakes. So that was the process. So, you know, like if you're a baby and you fall down, you learn something. So my, my biggest lessons was learning from people I thought were smarter than me, like the accountants and the attorneys. And they turned out to be crooks. Do you know what I mean? That was my lesson because I thought like my poor dad was a PhD. I should listen to him, but he was poor. But people listen to poor people, <laughs> if you know what I mean. That was Robert Kiyosaki. So I love what he says. That's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He makes great points on everything that he said regarding this because a lot of people, they hold everyone to their title too much and don't realize that a title is just a title. Like, I mean... I've seen in my recent days, I've seen doctors that surprisingly don't even know like what they're talking about, like in regards to nutrition, like a person that has their title, they just go by what they were taught. And it doesn't always mean that they are completely the expert in that field. Now, we see exceptions. And I would say like, you know, you could see doctors that, you know, own their own medical practices, own hospitals and stuff like that and think differently. But my point is like, people rely too much on someone to take care of them in a certain situation, whether it be say probate, where I saw this, where during a probate process, people rely too much on the lawyer. They're not looking into anything themselves. They're just solely relying on what the lawyer is telling them. And when you do that, you put yourself in a very weird spot because now you're fully dependent on this so-called expert to dictate what your next moves are. And that's, I think, a dangerous place to be because you're no longer in control of yourself or your own actions. You're relying on somebody else to tell you what to do. And so I think it's important for people in all cases, even if it's not entrepreneurship or whatever, but to think for themselves and fact check people. I think that's very important. Kirby, I know you got a lot to say on this, so I'll, I'll let you just go in. Oh, I don't even think we got enough time on this video for everything I got to say. Um, <laughs> What he said was, I mean, spot on. I mean, that's why we put the video up there. It's either we agree or disagree with what he said. And to your point, People put too much on titles and I'm going to go at it another way. Like in, you know, the instance you said about doctors, I want people to understand this. I want the viewers to understand this. These people that have titles, I don't care where, what they do. They work in a post office. They're just like you. When you go to work, you go to work to get a paycheck. You just trying to survive through the day. That's it. Just because they got a title on their name. That don't mean that they're not human. That's why everybody put, you know, celebrities and actors, they put on their pants one leg at a time, just like you do. Just like if you, you know, work at Starbucks, nothing wrong with Starbucks. If you work, you know, at McDonald's, if you work uh, in an office, everybody that's an employee, that's what they are, employees. I mean, you can, you know, specialty positions, like you said, specialists in certain fields, but for the most part, everybody is just an employee. Just like you, they just say, hey, I got to go to work. I got to put in this eight hours because I got to get the money to pay the bills. I'm not performing optimally. I'm just doing enough just to get the paycheck. That's what people are. And I just want to point out a couple of them. The ones that I think people depend on too much. And I'm going to start off. There's no particular order. And the uh, property managers, the property managers, people get property managers. Oh, I got a property manager. You as the investor, it is your job to manage the property manager. Nobody cares about your money more than you do. I send emails to property managers often. And the thing is, is property managers don't have no real skin in the game. When it, If a tenant short pays or don't pay at all, there's no skin off their back because they're going to get their share of it. And then if they want to work with tenants or whatever, and it goes months and months and they let evictions draw out, it's you as the investor that suffers. 
So don't just think because, oh, I have a property manager, it's all good and nothing happens. I have frequent conversations with property managers and I have multiple property managers across different states. We have these conversations because I want them to understand that my money is paramount. So don't do nothing that's going to have a financial impact on me because I'll get rid of it. And I'm coming up and I want to have the best plans in place. So if we have a problem tenant, we get rid of them as fast as possible because the longer they stay in a unit that's not paying rent or they're tearing up the unit way more than it should be past the average wear and tear, then it's costing me money. It ain't costing the property manager money because the property manager is just going to charge me for whatever they do. And they probably going to juice up the price anyway. So that's one that I, I really, that sticks out to me. And I know a lot of people don't use property manager, but that's one that sticks out. Another one, real estate agent. Everybody know at least five people that's a real estate agent. Real estate agents come a dime a dozen. Do you really think that they're proficient in their field? Real estate agent's job, and so everybody know, and I'm not here to bash real estate agents, but I'm trying to give the viewers an understanding. Real estate agents, the only time they get paid, no matter if you're a buyer's agent or selling agent, the only time they get paid is when a property sells. So I don't care what kind of agent they tell you they is, oh, I'm for the buyer, I'm for the seller. They have a life also. So if they only makes money when they get a sale, what do you think both agents are trying to do, buyer or seller agent? They're trying to make the sale. And of course, the higher the price that the property sells for, the higher the commission that the real estate agents will get. So they come a dime a dozen, they're not experts in a field, and they want you to pay the highest price possible to buy a property. And you put 100% blind trust in them. That's how a lot of people get screwed. Because most real estate agents, if you actually sit there and talk to them, they really have no clue at all if you just had a conversation. But because they have the title, everybody said, oh, they got it. They know what the heck they're doing. Me, I go through the process. I don't use a real estate agent as far as me, a buyer's agent. But when I'm talking to the seller's agent, I'm running them through the gambit of this is the stuff that's important. They talking to me about price per square foot. I don't give a damn about price per square foot. I need to know how much revenue I'm going to generate. They don't have a clue. I need to know, you know, what economic, uh, what economic facilities are in the proximity. I need to know the things that's economic drivers that will drive people to live in this area and what are the calls. I need to know about the dynamics of the area. They don't know. They don't care because the only thing they're worried about is a sale. And the reason why they're worried about a sale, I'm not blaming them for that, is because they have a family to take care of also. Just like you have a family wherever you work, you have a family to take care of. So you're going to do whatever you need to do to take care of them. And that's all that they're doing. They're not an expert in their field. I mean, you have the one, you know, the 1%, you know, top 10% real estate agents that really are honed in and they do their job. But that's only 10% of the agents. The rest of them just out here just playing games. So that's another one. And then this is not going to be a good, uh, a good subject, but your parents, I get it. They love you. I, I get it. They love you. But your parents tell you some of the wrongest information on earth, especially if they're baby boomers. They make it up as they go or they don't make it up as they go. They just regurgitating something that they heard from their parents, grandma and them from back before slavery times when they didn't even have vehicles. They're still using it in 2023. And question information received. Your parents give you, quote unquote, financial advice, but they ain't never had $10 in their bank account. Why would you listen to them when it comes to that aspect of it? I don't care what it is. You should not be listening to somebody who haven't done it. I don't want to hear the stories of I had friends or did this or did this. You want to talk to people that has done it. Point bank, period. People get advice from broke people all the time and they wonder why they're still broke. Oh, my, my man said this or my friend said this or my auntie told me this. What do your auntie have? Tell me what they're doing. You know, your parents always say, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. I always say, show me your friends, the five closest people you hang around, that's what you're going to be like. Because a lot of people don't do the research and they just take it off word of the mouth and it's not even conducive to really what's going on. It's all he said, she said stuff and then 
You don't even research it. Stop taking advice from broke people. He's 100% correct. Because I'm just going to be honest. If I listen to the financial advice from my parents, I'm going to be in a bad, I'll be in a bad spot. I'm not shaking shots of parents, but that's what I do. And, la and uh, last but not least, what, on this topic of making mistakes, I'm of the philosophy of you make mistakes. Me, with my kids, I'm an open book. I want my kids to know all the mistakes I made. I want people to know the mistakes I made. Not to say, to say oh, you know, Dad, you're not a superhero. You're human just like us. It's not about that. What it's about is I want them to make understand my mistakes because I've already lived the lives that they lived, that age range. And a lot of the mistakes that I made growing up, not having guidance or whatever, they're going to run into situations like that. I always tell my kids, I don't care if you make a mistake. Just don't make the mistakes that you already know about that I made and you already saw the outcome or you know about the outcome of those mistakes. Make new mistakes so we both can learn from them. Just make mistakes I ain't made. But I don't sit here and say, oh, you can't do that. You just, I'm not sitting here laying down the law saying, oh, no mistakes. And that's what school does. School is, hey, you get a test. It's only one answer to a test. But in life, it's many answers to problems. There's many ways to do it. Like Alex, when me and you talking about real estate deals, I'd be like, hey, you can come out at this angle. You can come out at that angle. You can do this. You can do this. Talking about putting tenants in properties. We came up with a plethora of ways to do it. Not just one answer solves anything. And those concepts right there, that is stuff that people need to understand that it's many, many, many opportunities out there but the way that you're being taught in this society, in schools, from your parents, from this people that's holding titles, that's what's holding you back. Those are the people that's holding you back. So now you can't say you know, and if you knew better, you'd do better. But Alex, that's all I got. You hit all the points. Teachers, too. I think you left them out, but teachers are another one. Don't listen. Yeah, yeah. That would have been, been, been a whole other movie. Yeah. <laughs> But you're you're right, man. It's 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 titles in general. Titles don't mean anything. It's what have you actually done? What actions have you taken? And that's why I specified on like what kind of doctor you are, because I we've mentioned this before. Education is one thing, but how do you apply yourself with that education? And you know, it it's it's just a matter of what results do you have? And it's funny because a lot of doctors, I mean, they're there to tell you your results and everything and you know, they'll, I've heard of doctors tell people they're obese and the doctor themselves is fat. So, I mean, it's just like, it, it's just hypocrisy. And so you want to look at people that actually know what they're doing. Same with finances. You know, if someone is trying to give you financial advice, what have they done to achieve financial success? And you have to select those people. And I mean, for me, it was the first person I started taking financial guidance or advice from was, uh, a boss of mine who wasn't rich or nothing, but he had a large emergency fund. His house was almost paid off. He had little to no consumer debt. You know, it was just basic finance, financial things that he was doing that was different from what I was hearing. You know, I, I knew people that had just tons of debt, tons of bills, and he wasn't one of those people. And then, you know, from starting to understand that and learn that from him, you know, okay, you know, try to avoid uh, consumer debt, uh, try to pay things with cash as much as much as I could. And, you know, try to uh, invest or put my money into something that, you know, could grow and value and appreciate and stuff. And from there, it was, you know, meeting other people. But, you know, you have to find you're not going to it's not like you're going to lock right on and meet Jeff Bezos in one day, you know, but you you've got to take advice from people that are actually doing it and actually performing. But we'll leave it at that, guys. With all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.